Do you know that pirates still exist? What? What? Not apologetic news, not what you're used to. Not apologetic news, telling you the truth. Not apologetic news, saying what they're scared to. Not apologetic news, do, do. Not apologetic news. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Non Apologetic News. Today, we have a woman who gets a tattoo for a reason you'll never guess down her forearm. Plus a pastor who has a problem with a specific book. All this and more today on Non-Apologetic News. So before we start, I do want to talk that tomorrow is the big day. Do you know what day that is? What day is it? El Den Ring Day. And yes, I have managed to stay spoiler free this entire time. All I know is this one single image from the game and I cannot wait to get into it. Now, for anyone who can't afford this game, PlayStation actually allows you to do this little bit of like a hack, but they allow it. So if you have a buddy, like we each have a PS5 at our house. So at his house, I'm the primary account on his PS5 and he's the secondary. And at my house, my PS5, he's the primary, I'm the secondary. So what that allows is any game I buy, he can play at his house. Any game he buys, I can play at my house. We've been what, splitting games for how long? Yeah, I can't tell you the last time I paid full price. So if you can't afford 60 or 70 bucks, whatever Elden Ring is, go have with a buddy, but don't go crazy. If you add a third account, you will get banned. They actually do allow this, but only on Deuce accounts. To get the show started, we have a mom gets a ruler tattoo. Could you ever guess why she would do that? Why would she do that? To measure penis sizes before sex. Of course. She claims it is a tool to enhance her life. 34-year-old woman stunned family and friends after having a ruler tattoo inked down her forearm so she could accurately measure the length of her partner's penises. Now, the sex-minded mom has a 14-year-old daughter. So she told her 14-year-old daughter this tattoo was to measure bananas and cucumbers at the store. Because people do that. People do do that. Do do that. Now, this tattoo does not include any numbers, instead featuring pretty dots that are spaced an inch apart. It doesn't have numbers. She says, it's actually rather discreet and allows me to innocently reach up to stroke a man's stomach while taking a glance at my arm alongside it to count the inches. So, it's one thing to describe this. It's another thing to get the tattoo. So I have the exact same tattoo that she has now and down the same size, the pinky. So she says she, well, she goes uh, to stroke a man's stomach and then I can measure. So she has to be stroking the man's stomach and look over and count the dots, right? Because that's discreet. <laughs> yeah, no one's ever gonna notice that. So I wonder, is he flaccid when this happens? Because that's not very fair. Well, I don't know. He's getting his stomach stroke. So. <laughs> Are any of us? So that means that she goes to stroke his stomach and then has to cock her forearm up to follow it and then look over. So this woman is absolutely insane. She says, it's something people may not think about when shaking my hand and won't look out of place in a nursing home when I'm 90. Now, that's a very telling statement right there because anyone who thinks they're going into a nursing home for sure thinks... No one loves them. And I actually completely agree with this woman. I don't think anyone loves you either. Now, she said she has a high libido and once had sex 11 times in a day. Now, I do truly believe that statement. She goes further on to say it's not all about size. It's what you do with it and how your partner makes you feel when building an intimate connection. She says that her teenage daughter now understands her cheeky behavior. So she knows that mama is, in fact, a hoe. In closing, she does have one more statement. She says, I am rather tempted to add some dots from my thumb to my index finger <laughs> to measure girth at the same time, but I'm not sure if it would be too obvious what I'm doing. I guess it all depends on where somebody is looking after I whip it out to count. So once again, she goes up to stroke the man's stomach. She looks over and now she's also going to like girth it with her little dots here. So... We are Twinkies. We have matching tattoos. In the end, I think you are a very funny lady, but I do not think you will find love. I think 
that you will only find a disappointment. All right, we announced last week that we were gonna do a PlayStation Network gift card giveaway. So all you had to do was comment to be entered. And I like this one a lot better than the PlayStation 5 giveaway because that was hundreds of entries and they kind of commented Then once we gave the PlayStation away, they just kind of disappeared. Right. These, like 90% of these people are people I've actually interacted with in the comments. So. We're not going to make a big deal out of it. We're just going to draw the name out, and whoever wins, you have one week to contact me. After that one week period, I don't know what to tell you, but you could hit, uh, you could comment, you could, uh, my email's in the about section, just get at me. All right, email, or winner of PlayStation Network gift card is, I will let you announce it. Who is that? Drunken Polar Bear. Drunken polar bear. <laughs> Drunken polar bear. Have you had interactions with this guy in the comments? Have you um, talked to him? No. No. I've gone back and forth with him a couple times. Pretty much everyone who entered I have. All right. Drunken polar bear. You got seven days. The countdown is on. Get at me. All right. A Tennessee pastor does not like Harry Potter or Twilight. A Tennessee pastor held a book burning event on February 2nd, urging his followers to throw their Harry Potter and Twilight copies into the bonfire. True that. The event, which was live streamed on Facebook, of course, of course, of course, was held to denounce witchcraft. And why? He said, Bring all your Harry Potter stuff. Laugh all you want, haters. I don't care. It's witchcraft 100%. What oh. pastor calls people haters? Right. <laughs> Uh, all your Twilight books and movies. That mess is full of spells, demonism, shape shifting, and the occultism. Mm. He says to stop allowing demonic influences into your home. The event comes amid a nationwide movement from schools to impose a ban on well known works of literature. Uh, earlier this month, a Texas parent demanded that her kids' school remove all copies of a biography of former First Lady Michelle Obama. Are they not like black people? That's Texas. So. The biography, a children's book, is leftist indoctrination. So her biography is a children's book? Yeah. <laughs> is it really? What is it, paint by numbers? How is Michelle Obama's uh, biography a children's book? Well, I'm not sure. But apparently, according to this woman, it unfairly portrays Donald Trump as a bully. And shames white girls. Well, as I always say, we cannot shame white girls, and we cannot have our supreme leader be shown in a light other than flattering. That's right. When well, I was uh, younger, in fifth grade, we read the book Johnny Tremaine. It was uh, a soldier in the Revolutionary War. I really don't remember it, but yeah, a lot of parents tried fighting to get that taken down because they said it was too violent because it depicted like wartime and like British are coming. The British are coming. Depicted history. Yeah, I told what really <laughs> happened that may not have been flattering in this nation's history. So let's hide that a little bit. Yeah. So I mean, was he successful? I mean, did a lot of people show up to the bonfire? I don't know. With Big say, J I'm sure. There's a lot of fucking nutbags out there. Huh? Well, I, I hope they had a fun time burning the books and then afterwards. Then we go to Sizzler, that baby. <laughs> they went to Sizzler. <laughs> did you know that that woman put a copyright strike against me? Uh, you know the the fool I showed on like the um the side of the highway after their armored oh, yeah. truck busted open. Yeah, so we said some non flattering things about this woman, and one of her little followers commented on the video and was like, "She's a famous YouTuber and all this." And it wasn't but twenty four hours later she issues a uh, copyright notice against me, the actual woman, not the commenter. So I assume the commenter went and told her that we were saying some things about her, and then she contacted YouTube. She told on me. So I wish I knew her name. I might even throw it up here just to blaster the the YouTuber just for being such a child. So that was all for views, by the How way, as well. fucking robbing an armored truck? Fucking yeah, copy, right? I was saying that that was <laughs> foolish. Well, you know, it was foolish. Do you know that pirates still exist? What? What? So I did a little bit of research on this. This story takes place in Somalia. So I thought, is this even true? So uh, it turns out... Uh, pirates in Somalia are like a big deal. Like last year from like boats or all their armed robberies and robberies. Or, Jesus, just about <laughs> fell out of my chair. I don't know what happened. But, <laughs> 
I guess last year they stole $150 million uh, from people in, in Somalian waters, which actually makes piracy Somalia's biggest industry at that amount, which is absolutely insane. So I guess the UN is trying to combat them. It's actually a real thing. Just us dumb Americans don't know about it or pay attention to it, myself included. So we have a man here on his sailboat and Somalian pirates start to approach. This fun-loving dude was just sailing with some friends trying to get himself some vitamin D. Just like bracelet woman, measure. <laughs> Crush him bruise with his boys, and who decides to show up? Somalian pirates. Unfortunately, this dude had to pause his Jimmy Buffett playlist and literally break out the big guns. Damn. In the video we are about to show you, the man in the white shirt appears with a shotgun in hand. Let's all together crank cheeseburger in paradise up to 11 and get our drink on to this softy clip. It begins with the man. The ship is approaching him. He can tell they're close enough they want to board. He has shotgun in hand. Boom, one in the air. Nothing. Boom, two in the air. They're still coming. So now he decides to point the shotgun <laughs> at the boat and take himself another little cheeky shot. No, no. You get swing. <laughs> you you get. <laughs> So he fires around at the boat, and it looks like at this point, the boat starts to slow down and also starts to veer off course. So he essentially warded off the Somalian pirates. How crazy would it be to be in the middle of nowhere and like, if you're in those waters, you're familiar with, uh, you know, how boats approach and whatnot. And they approach you, attempt to do you harm. And you pull out your boomstick, <laughs> like Ash from Evil Dead, and just start giving them hell. It's got crazy they backed up. You know, those guys carry, like, assault rifles and rocket launchers. And, that is a good point. Grenades. Why did they not fire back? Were they just out of ammo? And the only reason they were attacking him were just for ammo and beer money? or <laughs> They forgot the crate. <laughs> That, that is strange. What if, like, they weren't really pirates and they were just sightseeing people who got a little bit too close and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell, bro? But, yeah, so this broski made it out with his life. And we thank you for the video that looks like it was shot on a 1984 Sony Handycam at eight frames per second. What do you got to close us out with tonight, buddy? Cocaine in Argentina. <laughs> Apparently, adulterated cocaine killed 20 people and seriously sickened 74 others in Buenos Aires. Thank you. <laughs> Health officials said earlier Thursday as authorities searched frantically for the remainder of the deadly batch to get it off the streets before it is consumed. Experts are still analyzing the drug to determine what was in it that caused the deaths. Drugs. Yeah. Mm. Probably some fentanyl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Judicial officials said one hypothesis being considered was that the cocaine was intentionally adulterated as part of settling scores between traffickers. Mm -hmm. That's actually clever. Police said that the cocaine was sold in the poor neighborhood, Porta 8, in San Martin. So it's poor and it's Porta 8? It sounds like a fucking quarantine zone or something. Yeah, that does sound like something out of uh, Last of Us. <laughs> so, yeah. So, we got a bunch of people dead. We got a bunch of drugs. And we have sort of rival cartel, possibly. That's what it's looking like. That is absolutely insane. I don't know. It's just, it's a... Uh... It's a crazy thing to think about, you know, that the people would actually like go in and actually alter the drugs and taint it and then like give a bag of it to their to their enemies. It's actually kind of clever. Right. If that's what even but happened. But it's not going to go directly just to the enemy. They're going to throw it out to people who have nothing fucking do with the situation except they just want to snort some blow. That's right. And and like you had made the point like they're selling it they're selling the cocaine in poor neighborhoods. Yeah. It must be cheaper over there in Argentina. Yeah, because it's not fucking cheap here. Yeah, I know people, they'll just snort it, snort it, snort it just all damn day long. That's a rich man's drug. That's what they say. I don't know. Uh, the people who, who use it tell me that the high for them only lasts like an hour or something. But times I've tried it, I'm like gone for days. Like it's not, it's not something for me. I don't think you got Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I was a casualty 
in this drug trafficking like your was adulterated. <laughs> <laughs> that is some people you cannot snort drugs off the street anymore. No, he can't. You got it's... fentanyl, you got a holes who just do whatever they want. It is just absolutely insane. That is bothering my OCD. There you go, buddy. <laughs> but yeah, you cannot snort drugs off the street anymore. No. And we have all them famous people who, like, uh, we were talking about this off camera that guy from The Wire. Yeah. You know, he had, I, I don't remember his name, sorry guys, I don't watch the show, but they had him on camera actually doing a hand-to-hand -hand deal that he was actually still buying off the street, and it wound up having fentanyl or something in it, and the people, the dealers are going to jail, which I don't quite agree with. They should go to jail, but not for murder. Like, I think at some point we have to, like, personal responsibility has to step in. He chose to snort all that stuff. Whether it had fentanyl or not, he knew he was taking that chance. They should go to jail. But I think personal responsibility has to play a, a part here. Yeah. Because let's say the guy he bought it from is the one that put the shit in it. Yeah, because you know, he may not, he may not even, even have known. He hands. just may have been a typical scumbag dealer, not necessarily the guy who actually put the fentanyl or whatever yeah. in it. But, yeah, you just you can't do street drugs anymore. Even pills. People are like... Like putting their own stuff in them and stamping them out with these. There's these little presses you can use, and then you have your little uh, plate that has like the numbers on it. You put it in there, you hit it with a hammer, it compacts it, and like you could do one pill at a time. So it may have the proper stamp of Percocet or whatever, but it may not actually be that. So completely different. Our advice to you guys is do not snort street drugs. I don't know what you're going to snort. Be creative. I'm sure you will figure it out. Definitely don't get it from Argentina. No. Well, don't get it from American either. I mean, we are going crazy over here. So we hope that whatever it is, you snort does not kill you. And we see you next week here on Non-Apologetic News. We will be here next Wednesday. Tomorrow, Elden Ring is dropping. Get it. We're going to get it. We might not even show up next week because we're going to be too busy playing that bitch. That's right. I am Travis D. Right here is Body Bag. We are Non-Apologetic News. Till next week, do not watch the news. Not apologetic news. Not apologetic news.